The second point is, uh, what is the ruling of a zawaj? What is the ruling of a nikah? The ruling hukm means whether this is something that is part of the deen. Is it wajib? Is it mandatory? Is it recommended? Is it haram? Is it makruh? Disliked? Is it permissible? These five things, all of our life can be categorized into these five ahkam, five rulings. And this is always in fiqh, always in our, anything in our life. You can put it under, under one of these categories. The first one is al-wajib or the mandatory, which is an obligation. And the, and the wajib or the obligation, whoever does it, he get rewards. And whoever doesn't do it, right, this is a sinful act because it's an obligation like the salah and so on. The second ruling is the opposite of that is the haram. The haram means that a person is supposed to stay away from it. And if a person does it, he gets a sin. And if he uh, stay away from it, he gets a reward. So al-wajib versus al-haram. These are two. So then now you have al-mustahab, uh, which is recommended acts. If a person does it, he gets rewards. If he doesn't do it, he it's not a sinful thing. But he, you know, it's something that mustahab means it's recommended, it's uh, liked. Loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means a person should do the best they can to do the mustahab, to do what, what is recommended, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved for them to do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he did not make it an obligation to make the life of people easy. Like the night prayer, for example, when the Prophet والسلام, in Ramadan, uh, he led the people for a few days in Ramadan and then he stopped coming out to them to lead them in the salah or when they prayed behind the Prophet ﷺ, out of the fear that this might become an obligation upon them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for people to excel in levels of goodness by doing the recommended and the mustahabbat uh, to, to, for people to be in different levels of goodness <coughs> but not to make it as an obligation upon them. So this is al-mustahabbat. Many things in, in the deen is in the category of al-mustahab, like the sunnah prayers and so on. Uh, the fourth one, which is the opposite on the other side of the mustahab, is the makruh. Makruh is disliked or hated, literally. And it means uh, it's not in the level of haram. So uh, the makruh, whoever leaves it, for the sake of Allah, he, he gets rewards. And whoever does it, he does not get necessarily sins. But this is an alarm for the person because he's getting closer to the haram. So therefore, not everything has to be only halal and haram. There's an area where a person has to be uh, away from haram and leave an area between himself and the haram. Because once he comes closer to the haram, which is the subject of the makruh and the shubuhat and the doubtful matters and so on, he'll fall into the haram. But this is also by the mercy of Allah for the person to protect himself from the haram, to make that area of makruh between the haram. And sometimes the makruh becomes permissible, which is the fifth ruling, al mubah if it's needed. If there's a need for the makruh, then it becomes permissible and not makruh. And there's also many examples of this. So al makruh is what's disliked. Also, we get to know that with the ilm, with the knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And the fifth hukm or the fifth ruling is al-mubah. Al-mubah is what's permissible. It's neither uh, recommended or loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor it is makruh, something which basically many of our actions on a daily basis falls into the categories of mubah, like uh, eating, drinking, working, sleeping, all these types of things are mubahat. And these mubahat, which is, you know, occupies most of our time in which it shouldn't, but it has also rulings that has to be applied, not to be excessive in it, not to be so much attached to it. And at the same time, if a person does it according to the way the Prophet ﷺ, with the good intention, then that mubah becomes, you know, in a rewardable act for the person becomes a rewardable act because it's used for uh, the, to fulfill the obligations, to do the recommended acts, to stay away from haram. Like sleeping, for example, you sleep to wake up for salah, uh, to uh, be able to fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. So why the, these five ahkam are mentioned here? 
because when it comes to the nikah or the zawaj or the marriage, the five rulings applies to people and it's not the same for everyone. So there is when you say when we say ma hukmun nikah, what is the ruling of marriage? When it comes to marriage in itself, this is part of the deen. But then when it comes to the individuals, to some people it's an obligation, to some people it's recommended for them, for some people it's makruh, for some people it might be haram for them to get married, right? And there is the mubah or the permissibility level here. And that's important for a person to know in which category he's in if he's not married. Uh, so, <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'd, verse number 38, and I'm quoting from the what the Sheikh has in his book, he says, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّ We indeed send messengers before you, and we uh, made for them azwajan, wives, and dhurriya, offsprings. So this is part of the sunan and the ways of the mursali, the ways of the messengers of Allah. The best people ever, the messengers of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned that he had for them wives and children. So this is part of following the messengers, alayhi wasalam. And the Prophet, alayhi wasalatu wasalam, he said about himself, inni atazawwajun nisa, faman raghib an sunnati falaysa minni. He said, I, I marry the women. So whoever turns away from my sunnah, he is not from me. He's not part of me. Whoever turns away from this, making for the people, you know, a way of life that it does not include marriage. As some uh, people in other religions they consider that as a virtuous thing, to stay away from marriage or, or, or they think that this is to go against one's desire in this life. It's a, it's a righteous thing. And of course, this is something that they invented as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the people of the book, like some of the Christians they do. This is وَرَهْبَانِيَّةَ is when someone becomes in seclusion, uh, you know, or so that's how, and they made it for themselves. It's a religion that they made, invented, and it's not from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to do. So this is part of the deed of Islam, is to get married and to take the means to get married. And that's why he says, the ulama, they say, in the ma'a shahwati afdalu min nawafil ibad. To get married when a person have the desire to get married, because if a person is not able to fulfill the rights of their spouses, then it becomes maybe haram for them if they know that. So to get married, to be able to fulfill the rights of others is uh, is more virtue, it's more uh, it's better than to be busy with the optional acts of ibad. You know, it's, it's better for a person than to be busy with, you know, extra salah, for example, things like this. Why? Because there's so many different benefits as a result of marriage and the good outcome as a result of that, which is going to be mentioned later, inshallah ta'ala, as he says. Uh, the five rulings, as he said briefly, that some uh, to, to some people, a nikah or marriage becomes wajib, mandatory. If the person has a strong desire uh, and he fears for himself that he's going to fall into the haram if he doesn't get marriage, married, therefore it's mandatory for him to get married, to chastise himself, to protect himself from the haram. Uh, and when we say it's an obligation, that means he become a sinful person. If he knows that he falls into a sin as a result of not being married, uh, plus he has the means to get married. But if he doesn't have the means to get married, then um, there is no sin on that person. Of course, the sin will be according if he falls into a sin. That's a sinful thing. But we're talking about marriage itself. A person be committing a sin by not getting married. If he has the means to get married, and uh, not getting married causes him to fall into a sin. So that becomes a sinful thing for a person to not to get married. And this is when the Prophet والسلام, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata falaytazawaj, fa innahu aghaddu al-basar wa ahsanu al-farj, wa man lam yastata'a falayhi bil-sawm, fa innahu lahu wujah. Oh, young people, and the Prophet والسلام, addressing the young people because the shahwa and the desire in them is much stronger. Whoever has the ability to get married, then let him get married because it's aghaddu lil basar. It's more uh, for the person, more uh, helps the person to lower his gaze more and to protect his uh, private parts from committing sins. And whoever is not able to, then then he should keep on fasting 
because this will be a means of protection for him. And as we mentioned before the subject, the hadith, some people, they when they ask, what is the ilaj or what is the cure uh, for, for someone that wants to get married and is not able to get married, uh, and how to protect oneself from sins. The, the mean sounds very difficult, especially for a young person, you know, and that is to keep on fasting. And it's uh, for also for, for parents to see the difficulties that their children, they go through, uh, and the solution to them, most of the kids, we, do, we call them kids, but they're grown-ups and adults, they're not going through this, uh, through this mean of, uh, of protecting themselves. How many people that you saw that are from, from, from 50, being 15 years old till they get married, they're fasting every day. You know, even their parents will prevent them from doing so because they don't understand sometimes. They would say, why would you fast? You know, you need to study. You need to do this. It affects your studies, right? But what, the, what that young person can do to protect himself from falling into haram, when people belittle the haram, you know, they belittle even the issue of lowering the gaze. And it's a very difficult thing for someone that is young. So that means the communities, people need to make sure that marriage to the Muslims, this is something that is essential in their life. They should get married when they're young, if they have the means. And not to fall into this trap of, of araf and cultures, that the only way that a person get married is that when he reaches a certain level of of uh, wealth and status and things like this. And we put these hurdles and barriers. He has to finish this degree and that degree and this degree. And then he finds himself closer to being 30 years old and, or even when he's uh, 20 something, of course it's different from one person to the other, but it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, al -ba'a, as to be talked about inshallah ta'ala is the physical ability and the financial ability, of course, but they don't have to be rich for them to get married, poor people can still get married and people can be poor and then they become rich. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فقراء, If they are poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them rich from his bounties in the context of marriage, which is the, the main reason that many people, they don't allow their daughters, for example, to get married to someone that is still going to school, for example, because that person going to school even if he's from a rich family, he's poor because he's not earning, right? So they say that it's uncertainty, but it doesn't have to be. It depends on the person, if he's religious, if he's righteous, and if he's uh, someone that is responsible, why not get him made? Uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enrich them from his bounty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, why? Because protecting the deen is the most important thing before anything else. And when the deen to many people is not that important, then the dunya, the worldly life, becomes more important than this. So they think that marriage becomes a barrier for people to excel when it's the opposite. So this is a concept or perception that has to change. Uh, because the ruling here, if a person is not able to get married and he has the urge and he has the desire, then he has to protect himself. There's no excuse for him. And with the fit that we face nowadays, then a person should uh, then fast every day to protect himself as the Prophet ﷺ, he said. So uh, this is with the ahkam and the hukm of the marriage. Uh, for some people, this might be haram. If someone knows that if he gets married, he's not going to be able to fulfill the rights of his spouse, <clears throat> then it's haram for him to get married because he's going to abuse his spouse. right? And the makruh is one uh, of a lesser level than that. And mubah, when a person, marriage or non-marriage, it doesn't make a difference when it comes to the halal and the haram for him. Uh, he's not having, uh, you know, difficulties in protecting himself uh, with matters of his deen. And in general, it's always recommended because of the great benefits that happens as a result of marriage. Even the things that people complain uh, from when they're married, it's, it's benefits. When people have patience with one another, when people go through uh, relationships and uh, they're seeking rewards from Allah and they're, they're being patient, these things are rewardable acts. And uh, a person might not have to, to go through struggle if he's, if he's living alone, 
but it's of a less rewardable act when a person is alone. And that's why the mu'min الذي يخالط الناس ويصبر على أذاهم خير وحب إلى الله من المؤمن الذي لا يخالط الناس ويصبر على أذاهم. The believer that mixes with people and is patient with their uh, with their harm, the harm that comes from them, is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more rewardable for rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the one that isolates himself. And as a result of that, he's not patient with people. So, uh, and part of that is to establish families and to be patient and to seek rewards from Allah. Uh, and this is, uh, comes also into the subject of the hikmah or the wisdom behind marriage or the, the great benefits of marriage and so on. Uh, so this is with regards to hukm and nikah. So we talked about two things, the meaning of a nikah, the meaning of marriage, the definition of it, and the rulings of it. And that this is part of our deen.